everybody, it's KBeast, and for this week's art video, I am doing two small studies of the Aurora. Um, Northern Lights, Southern Lights, um, I think everybody knows what those are. Um, but I have a large piece that I'm planning that involves the Aurora in the background, and it's a piece I've been wanting to do for a really long time, and I really want to make sure that, like, when I do it, I know what I'm doing, basically. So I decided to set some time aside to just practice different techniques for painting the Aurora and try to figure out um, what works and what doesn't, basically. Um, before I did this, I watched a bunch of YouTube videos. Um, I can't remember all of them, but I just kind of got a look at how other people do it and different techniques that people use and um, picked two of them that I thought were interesting and tried them out. So I've done this before, um, one of my first art videos, I think. I think I had Aurora Studies last year, but um, it's been a while since I've done it, and I definitely think I learned a lot from this one. So this first Aurora that I'm painting, I didn't use photo reference for either of these, by the way. I wasn't trying to copy a photo of the actual Aurora. I was mostly just trying to get like the texture down. Um, so I wasn't too worried about making it look like an actual one. Um, I'm sorry if noise is picking up in the background. My neighbors are mowing their lawn. So if, it, uh, if you hear something in the background, that's probably what that is. Um, but for this first one, I used a wet on wet technique. So I got the entire paper wet, pretty saturated, I think. And then I just painted it layers on top of it while the paper was still wet. Uh, there were a couple of things I had issues with. Um, because the paper was taped down, it buckled, um, which made the middle rise up more than the and then the sides which means the paint kept pooling on the sides and the, I went in with my paper towel a lot to try and mop up the paints gray where it was pooling where the actual green was supposed to be so that was a little annoying um, that it did that I maybe I got the paper too wet I don't know maybe it was the fact that it was taped down um, so yeah one thing also is I didn't really leave space for white because I've noticed some techniques that I saw were while the actual color of where the Aurora was was still wet, they would go in and pick up some of the color to leave white spots, and I didn't do that. I also, I think, went in with the paints gray too dark too quickly because I tried to clean up and expand more of the colors and the light, but it's watercolor, so it's transparent or translucent or whatever, so it didn't really lay down right. If I had been using gouache, I probably would have been able to put some lights back, but it didn't really work. Um, but that's okay, you know, I did learn a few things, and then, you know, I'm splattering white gouache to do a star effect, and I really like the way that that splattering effect looks, but it's so annoying to do because I wind up with spots of white gouache everywhere. All over my desk, it wound up on my phone, I can still, I'm looking at the spots right now on my laptop, it got all over me. Yeah, no, I think if I'm going to do splatter techniques like this, I may need to take it outside or something, because... Um, I was actually intending to do four mini paintings for this video, but after doing the second one and cleaning up the white gouache spots for the second time, I was like, I'm done. That's enough. I can make a video out of this. I really don't want to do this again. So I need to either come up with a cleaner way of doing that technique or just do it outside next time. Um, so yeah, so for the second one, I started off just by doing, um, water, just a, just a wedding just the, the section at the top. It was originally going to be like a sky and I was going to do like a, um, I don't know, trees or something, but it wound up being the whole sky, the whole page wound up being the sky, so I don't know. Um, this one got away from me. I basically um, practiced a lot of techniques in one piece, kind of. Um, I tried doing, you know, using less water. I tried um, tilting it to make the wet watercolors run in a certain way. I tried spraying it with a little water bottle thing that I have. Um, I tried using a fan brush. I threw gouache on there. This this one, it's, it's very muddy as a result, although um, near the end I think I managed to save it, but it was basically me just trying stuff out, and I think the end result might have looked cleaner if um, I had had a bit more restraint, I think, or if I'd used some of the other paper that I had set aside to practice a sp specific technique on, but... I don't know. I just got really just crazy with this one and just tried a whole bunch of different stuff just to basically just kind of see how the watercolor reacted 
you know? Because in terms of like using watercolor, I'm still very basic with it. I just do light washes and maybe glazing, but I don't really like push my techniques for like, you know, texturing purposes or whatever. And I think I really need to do more of that. Um, it's just not something I've really set aside the time to do. Um, so this was the first time that I'd really just, I was basically just playing with it really at this point, just kind of seeing what happened. Um, so yeah, and you know, I, I'm still okay with the end result, you know, it looks okay, but the first one I think definitely turned out the best, um, because, you know, I held myself back a little more. Um, I might do another study just on my own time. Um, I'm actually, because I, I have quite a bit of time left before I have to do that, that big piece, because that's going to be the last video of the month, and I'm recording these videos in advance. Um, it's August 31st at the day that I'm recording this, by the way. Um, I have a part-time job now, which makes it difficult for me to set aside time every week to do a weekly video. So what I do is when I have long blocks of time off, I record in batches. So I actually recorded two videos yesterday and I'm doing, and I'm editing them today is how I'm doing it. Um, and I think that's helping a lot because Inktober's coming up and you guys know I'm doing it again. Don't know for sure if I'm doing like a whole month of videos or not, or if I'm just gonna do like a recap video at the end of the week for my Inktober pieces. I haven't really decided yet, but I do have a theme. I have a list that I'm excited about and because of my part-time job and everything and because I do know I'm gonna record a few of them, I'm probably gonna get started on them early so that I can be done at a reasonable time. Um, which, you know, is kind of cheating, but, you know, it's really the only way I can get it done. And sometimes when you have uh, other things going on, it's really hard to keep up with monthly challenges like that. And I still really want to do it. Because um, last year I didn't finish. And I felt bad about that. And I'm like, eh, I want to do it again. So, yeah, I, I tilted this thing. I sprayed water at it. It wound up kind of a muddy mess. So then I used some of the white gouache to maybe, like, clean up some of the areas. And I used the fan brush... I, I never use that thing. I just, I, I've never really found a use for it. It's just there. Um, to like, do like the bands of the light going up. I don't know. Um, I kind of liked how it looked a little, but I think I overdid it. I think this whole piece, to be honest, the second one is just me overdoing it. But like I said, I was just kind of playing around and just kind of seeing what worked and what didn't. And a few things if I had used more restraint, like I said, probably would have worked, but I, yeah, I, I worked this piece of paper to death, basically. Um, but I did learn a lot by doing these. Um, so now I've got plenty of time to work on that big piece of art, um, for the, for the end of next month, the time I'm recording this. Um, so I don't have to rush to do it and, uh, do some studies and things because uh, I'm, I'm pretty excited about this piece. It's going to be a fan art piece, by the way. Um, one that I've wanted to do for a long time. And I'm finally, like, confident enough now in my watercolor skills that I can finally start tackling these fan art pieces that I've had planned for ages. Um, I have another one I want to do that has been in a sketchbook for, like, three years. But I was like, oh, I'm not good enough at painting yet. I'm going to just set this aside. But finally feel like I can tackle these ideas. So, uh, the first one is going to be, uh, two weeks after this video goes up. So it'll be the last Saturday of September. And I basically have an entire month at the time I'm recording this to work on it. So that should help. I won't be so rushed. I think it'll turn out really good. Um, but yeah, I really, you know, just, just kind of wanted to mess around and try something out and at the end, you know, I'm pretty happy with the result. Like I said, it was a learning experience mostly, and I think I definitely learned a few things. I, I learned, you know, what to do and what not to do. Uh, the second one that I did, this one right here, is definitely more of what not to do. Um, <laughs> but yeah, uh, I guess that does it for this week's video. Um, let me know what you guys think. If you have any tips, if you guys are watercolor artists and you've you've done things like this, um, you know, let me know. And yeah. Anyway, that does it for this week. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!